Hello, everybody. Today is Friday, October 22nd, and we wanted to talk today about spot gamma levels, the mean reversion effect of positive gamma, and just how someone could take advantage of the data that we put out every single day. Today was a great example, you know, just a pure positive gamma mean reversion trade right off a major level. And we realized that, you know, this is explaining this in a little bit of hindsight. It's just it played out so beautifully in, in exactly, you know, how we would anticipate it given this big gamma position. So if we start out today, we just give a quick look at our report. Uh, we were pushed out, excuse me, we were put out this report every single day, every single morning. And then we put a recap of the market in at night. And what we try to outdo is we outlay what the major levels are in the market. Is gamma you know, positive? Is it negative? What are the effects of that? What should you look for if you're a trader, not only today, but several days out in the future? And really what we said is that there was a lot of gamma build overnight. And when we talk about this positive gamma or negative gamma, we quantify that. And that leads us to put out something called the SG implied move. You can see that on your screen here. And what this does is it looks at the history of gamma levels or how much gamma is in the market. And it uses that to estimate how much movement we should see in the day. Now, this is a maximum move on the day, not where the market should close. And it's critical to note that because if you think about what positive gamma means, it means that dealers should be buying dips and selling rips, right? And that should contain volatility and push the market into a range. So if you believe in the forces of of gamma and dealer hedging, then when we have a lot of positive gamma flow, the more positive gamma flow we have, the tighter the ranges should be on the day. And that supports this idea of mean reversion. If we sell off sharply, dealers should ultimately come back in and buy that market back up. So that's what we sort of noted here. We expect a tight range on the day and we break down a whole bunch more information about the volatility curves and the like. But essentially where I'm trying to get with this is that we also set up these key levels on the day. And these key levels for the day are pockets of open interest. And we think that where big levels of open interest are, big strikes with open interest, that tends to be support and resistance because it kicks in liquidity and liquidity tends to, one, draw price to it, but also can be the spot at which these flows can turn around, right? If I'm long puts at uh, 45.25 and the market drops to 45.25, suddenly, you know, that at the, at the money option has a lot of gamma and I might try to close that position out. Uh, if I'm a future trader, I might sort of switch at that big position, et cetera. So liquidity shows up at these big strikes, and we think that's why they become important support and resistance lines. Now, one of the things that makes it a little bit easier, which y'all may want to do if you start using our service or try it out, is we if you go to our portal page, we have these pop-up boxes, and these pop-up boxes will show you all of the key levels on the trading day. So you can click it, you get a, a small little a pop-up window here, you can see all of our levels laid out. Now, it looks like a lot of levels, right? But this is spread out over 200 points in the S&P. If you look at this, 4586, all the way down to 4330. And we kind of label these in terms of importance as one through five. So a large gamma one means it's most important. You know, five is kind of the smallest of the of our, of our major levels. I'm going to close that window and just flip over to TradingView for a second. Now, real quick, I should mention, if you click on this TradingView link, you can get this little application that allows you to push our levels onto trading view as you see here. So again, if you think back to our note, what did we talk about today? Well, we talked about two things. One, we talked about the major levels. So these major levels are here. There's actually two levels overlapping, which is why you see kind of garbled text there, but here's combo four, here's combo one and large gamma two. So these are really big levels. There's a ton of gamma in this immediate range of essentially 45, 60, which is the equivalent to Spider 455. Our call wall is in here, which are, is our largest area of positive gamma. And then all the way down to 4500, uh, 0, 0, there's just a ton of positions. So you can see exactly how the market moved on this, uh, on this drop. Now, this drop was due to the Fed came out and said that they may taper. And that spooked a lot of investors. And the thing that's interesting about that is there's probably a lot of algos that read that immediately, right? But the big macro funds, they can't adjust on a headline that quickly, right? So there's going to get this immediate, immediate re, knee-jerk reaction, excuse me. And then that sentiment or that initial trade is probably going to fade. And we have so much positive gamma that you would expect some mean reversion, right? Because these market makers don't care what Powell said. They have these options, hedges that they need to mechanically take care of. And a big macro fund is suddenly not going to say, well, we need to get out of tech and into you know, value because Powell just said he's going to start tapering. That, that reaction is too fast. You can't, those guys can't move that quickly. So 
the forces of mean regain of mean reversion are going to stick around at least in the middle of the day towards the close now some people may make some adjustments that's yet to be seen but that's sort of besides our point for this video what you can see here is that powell speaks at 11 you know which is right here and the market does not like what he's got to say and we drop very very sharply and we bounce off of this major level now we kind of checked here for a second which is the combo one which is our you know key our major level on the day excuse me but this big gamma two is is where this thing ultimately ricocheted off there's headlines kind of releasing all through here so we hit this level and we mean revert and we push back up what i want to what i want to bring up here which is is likely missed a little bit on some people is that when we talk about this implied move on the day so we want to show something that's really interesting here if we click this little price change chart and we go to what the opening price is on the day this is how we personally use the uh, spot gamma implied move on the day. I'm going to show you exactly how much the market moved today. You can probably already guess exactly, you know, how much it did. So if we just pull up where we were trading roughly at 930 and we bring this bar down, you can see that the max move on the day is 50 basis points. So we drop extraordinarily hard right down to this 4525 level, which happens to be the maximum implied move on the day almost to the T. We, we forecasted 53 bips. This is 50 bips. It's a humongous spot gamma level. And lo and behold, we bounce right back up. We get this mean reversion flu, uh, flow, pardon me, right back into essentially where we open, right? This is the power and the flows of, of mean reversion. So we hope that this helps you sort of uh, anticipate what some of our levels can do, how you can take advantage of trading. I mean, there was guys in our Discord chat talking about buying futures here. They, they were selling call spreads. They were, you know, uh, on the way down. They were selling put spreads on the way up. There's a whole, whole bunch of different ways you want to play this on an intraday basis. Uh, but even over a little bit of a longer term, right? If you know that this positive gamma flows a little bit longer, this is a major headline. Well, look, positive gamma is here for today. I can kind of digest this news, figure out what's going on. Does this taper matter? Does it not? How do I want to adjust my portfolio? Because gamma is so positive, I have a little bit of time today, right? The market is likely not going to fall apart today. Whereas if this was a negative gamma position, that headline hit, we could be down, you know, one or 2% hypothetically, right? So hopefully this, again, sheds light on how to use some of these levels. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below or send us an email at info at spotgamma.com. Thanks.